So today's brief audio lectures, we're going to discuss why you might want to be a landscape management career professional in the horticulture industry. Much of the data I'm going to present to you here comes from surveys sponsored by either Planet or the American Nursery and Landscape Association. Both of these are excellent organizations. You can find more information about Planet at www.landcarenetwork.org. This is a relatively recent uh, amalgam of two organizations which were previously the Associated Landscape Contractors of America and the Professional Lawn Care Association of America and now they're the Professional Landsca uh, Land Care Network. The American Nursery Landscape Association is over 100 years old, another great organization, and you can find more information about them at www.anla.org. Uh, both of these links are available on the blog site. And I would encourage you, regardless of what area of horticulture uh, you, you wind up in professionally, that you join a professional organization. It's a way to stop, stay on top of current trends, practices, laws, regulations, and a good way to meet uh, colleagues and peers and people who are going to help that business grow. Business growth in the horticulture and landscape management maintenance area included is very large in landscape management maintenance. In 2002, there were about uh, 29 billion dollars, billion that is, dollars of, sir, of services sold. In 2003, it was about 37 billion dollars of services sold. And in 2004, it was more than 40 billion dollars. So although a lot of businesses are suffering and even shrinking, uh, in the U.S. right now, the landscape business continues to grow, and it's expected to continue to grow for some time. The major components of this, of these services that are sold every year, include installation construction, which also includes hardscapes like pavers, walkways, stone walls, uh, rock work, fountain installation, uh, and also installing plants as well, design work tree care, and also maintenance. This last year, uh, based on a survey of a few thousand people, about 32% of consumers purchase landscape services. And this could be anything from lawn mowing to uh, biological pest control, tree installation, uh, building a new patio out of pavers, building a new stone wall. But almost a third of people purchase something in this area. Uh, and while farms across the U.S. decline in number, the number of nurseries and greenhouse operations continues to rise. And horticulture farms are ranked number one in net farm income. And to give you an idea, you know, there's some farms that do quite well, but the national average for net farm income is only about $13,000. Now, that sounds awful low. Uh, but in fact, of all farms across the U.S., the average net income is only $13,000. However, the averages for nurseries and greenhouses, which is another type of farming uh, related to horticulture, is $54,000 a year. That's the average, which means there's a lot of people that make a lot more and, and people that make a lot less. But the average is almost four times what it is for all farms in the U.S. Now, many of you taking this course from North Carolina, uh, you know, Florida and California, Texas, obviously very big players, but North Carolina uh, accounts for 9% of the nursery crop output in the U.S. So, you know, you think about landscape maintenance and management, uh, we're living in a state that produces an awful lot of nursery crops, and a lot of those can be sold locally. And there's always a need to put them in, design landscapes for them, and maintain those landscapes. So, in 2004, uh, based on a survey, they asked people who owned landscape management businesses, did they think their revenue would increase, decrease, or remain the same this year? Well, 70% of the folks thought that it, business was going to get better. And again, if you ask people in a lot of other areas of business, uh, oftentimes th they don't have this positive of an outlook. Uh, only 6% thought that their business was going to decrease. 
uh, almost all of them, uh, close to 90 percent, uh, agreed that uh, there would be more work this year compared to last year. Now, if you look at the middle question on the right there, is it easier to be profitable this year compared to last year? 62% uh, uh, disagreed. So although the business is growing and there's more business, things are getting more competitive out there. It's, it's like any business model. Uh, when people see an area for uh, profit, uh, a lot of new business people will move into that area. A lot of capital will get put into it. Uh, you know, lawn mowing used to be the domain of teenagers in the summertime uh, making a little extra spending money to go to the movies and buy gas for their cars. Uh, this has now gotten to be a multi-billion dollar business uh, with some very large firms and lots of people wanting to purchase services. And it was about 50-50 split on is cash flow you know, better this year compared to last year. And they, these numbers are from 2004, uh, but things have stayed pretty much the same in the business uh, for the past couple of years. But this is the most recent information I could find. So when you talk to, you know, we've, we've mentioned all the good things about the horticultural businesses and how they can grow and how landscape management and maintenance is a growing field. But when they talk to business leaders in the area of landscape management, they said, what are your biggest challenges? Well, one is managing growth. Uh, I've run into more than one uh, landscape uh, maintenance person here, whether it's pest control or lawns in western North Carolina, and they start off as sort of a small outfit. Maybe there's one or two employees working together, and they're able to handle 100, 200 accounts, and suddenly in a couple years, uh, they haven't added a lot of new workers, and they have three to four times that many accounts. So managing growth is always a challenge for the small business uh, person. You know. Labor availability is always an issue. Um, it's tough to find dependable labor. Uh, when you're talking about landscape installation and maintenance, it's usually very hard uh, physical labor. Uh, conditions can be pretty rough. Um, a lot of clients on high-end properties want things to look nice no matter what the weather is, no matter what the pest situation has been that year, and, and it can just be a difficult work environment in general. Uh, cash flow can be a challenge. Um, and also, you know, a lot of times the better uh, landscape management firms will offer contracts. So they tell someone, you know, I'm going to, for $2,000, this is what you're going to get from me this summer for your lawn and landscape. And then let's say gas prices double or triple. Uh, you know, those sort of things can really, really uh, affect your cash flow. Cut rate price competition. Uh, this is always a problem. You get a reputable firm run by reputable men and women, and they're charging a price that's fair and, and it's what it costs for them to live and pay their employee well, pay, pay their employees well. And someone comes to the area, you know, with a truck and a trailer and a couple of lawnmowers and they basically go around and undercut the established businesses. Now, the good news there is there are always people who are going to bite uh, when they're offered the bargain basement deal. But I'm a strong believer in you pay uh, for what you get, and if you're going with someone who's offering this cut rate bargain basement deal, either their service isn't going to be good, or at some point they're going to have to raise their prices. Um, so I always try to educate the consumer and the cu customer and let them know, you know what your qualifications are, why you charge what you do, and you know, oh, you know, some people will say, oh, well, I can get the same contract here for half as much. The best thing you can do is let that potential customer go. And I bet you seven times out of ten, they'll be calling you or knocking at your door again when the firm they've hired fails to provide a service at the level they expected. Another challenge is developing supervisors and foremen. Uh, a lot of us are good at managing our own business and managing uh, a small number of employees. But suddenly when, we have, when the business grows enough to have to require mid-level management, um, things get a little more difficult. 
Uh, finally, you know, this is a business that, especially in certain crunch times of the year, you can wind up working quite a few hours. And, and I want to make you aware of this because if you're uh, a 9 to 5 person, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But outdoor horticulture management maintenance installation work probably isn't going to be for you. Um, because when people were surveyed about how many hours they had worked in the last week, uh, a large portion of people, 85%, worked more than 40 hours a week. And if you look at this particular graph here, which is kind of nice, it shows blades of grass, about 45% or so of folks worked over 50 hours a week. So this is a, a business and a, and a profession that's going to cause you to burn a lot of daylight. 